Hello, my name is Adrian Stanek. I'm from Lyons. I'm very pleased to be presenting Pran Square to you as a part of the Open House Speaker Series. We won this project in a limited design competition for Stonington City Council, which we did in association with Aspect Studios Landscape Architecture. If I were to summarise the brief for the competition, it could be simply described as having three key elements. One, addressing the desperate need for outdoor open public space for the inner city suburb of Paran. Two, providing high quality car parking with additional capacity. And three, but most importantly, designing a highly flexible multimodal space that could accommodate a whole range of activities from small scale events through to large scale events. When you look at the site pre-existing, it was actually a very large area almost 10,000 square metres. And when you compare that to say Federation Square, you can see how big the site area is. In doing our critical site analysis, we observed that there are four distinctive zones surrounding the site. The first zone incorporates the market, Grattan Gardens and the community centre. The second is the zone that incorporates Commercial Road and Chapel Street. The third zone is the old civic precinct, which includes the town hall, the courthouse and the old jail. The fourth is the zone that captures Greville Street and Paran Station. Our site analysis also showed that there were very strong diagonal pedestrian lines across the site. We also recognised that each street frontage was going to be critical to the long-term evolution and activation of each street frontage. We were very conscious that the project would eventually be a catalyst for future developments, particularly along Cato Street. Considering this, we undertook that each of the corners would be highly important, firstly, in engaging the four precincts, and secondly, anchoring the pedestrian desire lines across the site. We also felt that it was important to emphasise pedestrian movement around the site, so we removed traffic from Wattle Street and Cato Streets by introducing a fully pedestrianised space in Wattle Street and a shared zone in Cato Street to enable service truck deliveries to the supermarkets. This was critical to traffic decongestion and pedestrian conflicts in these spaces. With the key structural components of the analysis defined, we determined strategic locations for the main pedestrian entry portals into the car park, which would be developed in its entirety underground. Through detailed traffic analysis, we also determined that Izzet Street would provide the best point for vehicular access into the underground car park. And we suggested a one-way diversion for the tail ends of Wattle and Cato Street. In recognition that the site was very large, we knew that it was going to be very important to create a diversity of experience across the site. So we looked at dividing the site area into nine components comprised of the four corners, the street edges and the central space. Through the design process, we were also interested in the idea of tying this project back to the history of Paran to create a historical dialogue, albeit in an abstract way. We did this by mapping each of the landmarks surrounding the site, such as the Town Hall, the Clock Tower, Paran Central Domes, the Market Entry and the Jam Factory Smoke Tower. We then used these landmarks to map a series of threads across the site to each point of the nine squares to create a woven fabric. These threads created a means for shaping each of the nine components. We like this idea as it referenced Paran's deep history in the craft of drapery. The result of this operation created nine distinctive shapes for each of the nine key spaces within Paran Square. Market corner, commercial corner, rebel corner and civic corner. The lawn, the forest, the garden and the terrace, all intrinsically connected with the central square. These are two cross sections through the project. Firstly, they show the two levels of basement car parking that stretch the extents of the site area. Secondly, they show the forest, the terrace and the lawn as spaces that are structurally inclined to face the central square. This design tactic creates a means for visual access to the streetscape into the car park. It also provides space necessary for the entry portals, the lifts, travelators, the retail spaces, the car park entry and various elements of plant and equipment. This slide from our competition pack shows the composition of all nine elements within the context of brand. 
you'll note that the project has a distinctive white ribbon that ties together all of the spaces and accentuates each of the corners, which, like arrowheads, point to the centre of the square. One of the other very important aspects of the project is its environmental design approach. One of the key components of this approach was the aspect of water harvesting. Water is collected from the ground level of the square and piped into treatment plant and holding tanks in the basement level for reuse in reticulation irrigation throughout the landscape areas of the project. It is worth noting that harvesting water from a ground plane rather than a roof plane requires far more rigorous systems to treat the water for reuse. One of the other important ambitions of the project was to minimise energy use. This was done by providing natural lighting into the car park where possible through the building form of the inclined structures. Also by utilising energy efficient LED lighting into the car park and through, throughout the external areas of the square. The lighting externally has also been designed to minimise light pollution to the surrounding areas. Also central to the environmental approach for the project was the introduction of ecological diversity through landscape planting. This was achieved through native gums and shrubs, palms and olive trees, all selected for their durability and drought resistance. This slide shows how important the corners are in drawing the surrounding precinct into the square. The in situ concrete ribbon orchestrates this movement and creates gateways into the square. The corners are spaces that make transition from their associated surrounding precinct into the square. They are all landscape spaces where the planters provide different types of casual seating opportunities for gathering, meeting or resting. Each corner has been designed with its own palette of materials that respond to each of the four surrounding precincts. For example, this is commercial corner where the brickwork paving references the brickwork factories that once existed in Chapel Street. And this is Greville Corner, where the granite paving is more colourful, expressive and textured. The corners also serve to create a means of clear orientation within the square. On each of the corners, there is a grove of steel pipes. This is an artwork piece designed by Ramus and Material Thinking in collaboration with Lions. The work comprises high resolution LED screens with a three dimensional soundscape integrated within the pipes to create a truly unique but subtle entry and exit experience for the square. Visual and acoustic works have been specifically designed to reference Paran and its pre-colonial ecology and indigenous heritage. Here you see the artwork animating commercial corner and at this time providing a soundscape of machinery which is a further reference to the drapery trade that once existed in Paran. The centre of the square is the heart of the project. It is the exchange for movement and visual perspective from in, within inside the square. The central square provides highly flexible space with supporting services infrastructure for an extensive range of outdoor activities. Here you see the smoking ceremony conducted at the official opening of the square. The field of dots in the paving are the jet ports for a central water feature that has been turned off for this occasion. When the square is not being used for structured activities, the water feature populates the central square and engages passers-by. It also provides a focal point to the centre from the surrounding spaces, much like the hearth in the living room. The central square provides a safe, open, well-lit environment that encourages and supports diagonal pedestrian desire lines across the site. And consequently, with this intersection of pedestrian movement comes a moment for serendipity. The central square foregrounds the lawn, which is a north-facing space. The lawn is designed with real grass and populated with native gum trees, albeit very young at this stage. It is a space for structured and unstructured activities, for dog walking and play, or just chilling out and having a picnic with an elevated view of Paran overlooking the square. The terrace to the right has been composed as a series of large urban steps formed with garden beds, seating and shading that can be used casually or for structured seating space for organised events within the square, such as concerts, performances and demonstrations. 
As with the lawn, it provides an elevated view of the square and the surrounding context of Paran. Across from the square is a curious sculptural play object designed for the project by Aspect Studio in collaboration with Lions. This creature watches over the square and announces entry into the forest. The forest, named as such, as it is a space that incorporates references from Victorian native forests. This space has been composed with Victorian mudstone blocks and native gums and shrubs. A path leads people up the elevated aspect of the forest, switching from end to end. But the pathway is not the only way to engage in the forest. People are encouraged to scale the mudstone blocks or use them to sit and enjoy the space. Whereas at the top of the forest, there is a seating space for respite and also another play area that overlooks the square and commands an elevated view of central Paran. Through all its seating opportunities, the forest provides a unique way to retreat or engage with the square. And like all of the public spaces in the square, it has been designed and lit for safety and amenity. The sensory garden sits at the southern end of the square and literally merges into the square. The garden is planted with herbaceous shrubs and cabbage palms, and the planters are fabricated from core team rusted steel. The sensory garden is designed as a series of spaces that create small nooks nestled within the planting and fixed furniture to encourage intimate occupation. The space is shaded by operable umbrellas and fixed screen pergola to provide additional amenity to the space all year round. The sensory garden provides an on-grade perspective of the square and will support the eventual retail tenancy occupation of the space to the left of this image. This slide is a ground level plan of the project. The yellow and blue areas on the plan indicate the area that is dedicated to activation of the streetscapes. Yellow is defined as lobbies, lift areas and stairs. Blue is defined as opportunity space or retail area. In this way, the streetscapes are designed to minimise unactivated frontages. Chatham Street at the southern end of the project was expanded by extending the streetscape across the roof of the car park. This strategy also supported the principle of establishing a pedestrian link across Izzet Street into Grattan Street Gardens through a block recently purchased by the council as a pocket park. Each street edge is announced and emphasised by the concrete ribbon form. This is a streetscape view of the lofted form of the lawn floating over a stair portal into the car park. To the right is the expanded space of Chatham Street. On Model Street, the concrete ribbon becomes a fine floating canopy that accommodates the entry portal into the car park and the retail areas that sit adjacent to the sensory garden. At Civic Corner, the lofted form of the terrace creates transparency through to Cato Street and provides a space for which the stair from the car park rises to the street. On Cato Street, seating and planting combine to provide amelioration and amenity in the shared pedestrian zone. The perforated wall of the main plant room that supplies air to the car park is folded in orange aluminium to create additional seating to engage the street. Safety in the form of passive surveillance has been considered very carefully throughout the project. Even the amenities areas have been designed to provide passive surveillance of those spaces, looking in from the street and looking out. The amenities wash area has also been designed to be open and highly visible. The concept of passive surveillance is critical to the idea of crime prevention through environmental design which has been implemented throughout all the spaces of the project. Here, there is a visual connection provided from commercial corner into the car park, and this view from Greville corner into the car park, and this from Cato Street into the stair into the car park. The vehicular entry to the car park is from Izzet Street. To the right screened in film is a retail area yet to be let. The car park entry has been minimised without consequence to its functional use and has been designed in subtle but effective neon light. The main entry to the is from Cato Street. The lobby area has been designed to be highly transparent, connecting the street with the car park. 
The main form of access between the ground and the basement levels is by travelator with lifts also provided in this location. The car park has been designed to accommodate almost 500 cars over two levels. It has been future-proofed for potential adaptive reuse one day by creating a larger ceiling height of three metres at the basement level one. This results in a grand and lofty entrance space into the car park from Cato Street. The car park has also been designed to avoid the substandard car park scenario that existed prior to this project. The columns have been spaced at a long span to enable cars to freely move within the space and the doors not to clash with columns. The articulated painting of the structural elements in the car park create a bright field of colour and energy in the car park. The wayfinding designed by FOD has been developed to register each of the main streets within the car park for means of orientation. The lift lobbies have been detailed in pattern precast panels and coloured in the project's signature blue. And all the stairs in the car park have been designed as glowing glazed beacons to create a further means of wayfinding within those spaces. In summary, Grand Square is a unique public space type. It brings together a series of diverse experiences into one integrated piece of urban infrastructure. While it comprehensively addresses the critical need for safe quality car parking, it purposely excludes traffic and cars from the public realm captured within the ribbon edges. At a macro level, it stitches itself into the fabric of Paran to facilitate new movement and new community consciousness. This is a public building and a public space that over time, as the landscape matures, it will facilitate new creative uses by the community and the Stonington City Council. The last slide I'd like to show you is not a Paran Square, but I think it has some interesting parallels. Federation Square replaced what was previously the gas and fuel buildings, which was widely regarded as a blight to the city edge. I feel that Federation Square was an incredibly important project in Melbourne, for not only transforming this important city corner, but also for demonstrating how we can develop the edge of the city. Whilst it challenges the formality of the city grid, it also respects it. The spaces it creates are granular as well as sparse. The arrangement of buildings and the public space is abstract as well as it is formal. Importantly, the project has created for Victorians a new way of thinking about the use and nature of public space and galvanised our collective understanding of the importance of having a space that symbolises the city's cultural heart. Thank you.